I, I can't believe I haven't met you I like can't officially. Either. Like we like maybe in passing or something. But well, I've been a fan for a long time. Myself as well. A it's very, such very an honor to time. finally see you in person. But some people you feel like you already know. Yeah. Anyway, it's kind of like that. No, but you're like one of the few talented people left. You know? Oh, wow. Thank you. Uh... <laughs> so good. Like, you know, like her voice is obviously amazing. Thank you. Your voice is so good, you almost sang me out of the closet. Wow, well, I did. <laughs> you want me to tell you a story? I'll tell you a story. I need to hear this story. I, I'll make this story. <laughs> I ain't okay, never heard so, it like this. So it, uh, I was 18 when the Dream Girls came out okay. and the, the soundtrack came out, and I loved it. I, I really, really loved it. But I was like masculine, and I was in the hood, so I had to. That had to be a secret love. Uh -huh. like, I, like I was like a closeted singer. I was a closeted everything, but like a closeted singer. So like in the streets, I had to play like you know Fifty Cent, uh -huh. Get Rich or Die Trying, stuff like that. Like you know, play like real strong like rap songs and stuff like that. But love, love, love the soundtrack. You used to also date girls, uh -huh. right? Can you believe it? Anyway, I was on this date. I, I wanted to impress this girl. Um, and so I borrowed my big brother's car. He had a Lexus. He let me borrow. We got ribs. <laughs> uh -huh. We got a molten chocolate cake. Okay. I paid for it. Oh, go ahead. Oh my God. I was like, seriously, I uh -huh. was the man, uh -huh. right? Took her back to her dorm, and she wanted to put on music. The Dream Girl soundtrack. <laughs> now what I gotta happened? pretend I don't know it. Like, you have to pretend. I gotta pretend like you know. I'm like, oh no, yeah, yeah. Put your yeah, put your little song on. Like I'm acting like I don't know it. So she puts on I Love You, I Do, Did right? She? Oh my God. So, <laughs> like, I'm trying, because I, like, I really want to impress this girl. I want to kiss her. I want to, like, you know, I'm like trying to keep it together. And she's singing, she's singing the song to me, like dancing around. She gets really, really close to me. At the end, she puts her hands around my neck. You know, she's staring into my eyes. And I don't know if you know the song, at the end of the song is one of the greatest vocal runs of all oh. time. And I'm, I'm like fighting it. I'm fighting it, Jennifer. And like her arms are right here. She's looking at me. And as soon as it got to the end, instead of kissing her, I'm singing along. I love you, I do. You better. And I was like, hey, run that back. <laughs> like, I, I couldn't. I, love I couldn't. You, do it. I couldn't. Anyway, I, it, I was this close. I done heard a lot of effy dream girl stories, but never like this. <laughs> <laughs> so good. You're too good. I, thank you for that. Well, I'm, I'm glad that I can contribute to you being able to come out the closet <laughs> yeah. or whatever you needed yeah. to. Yeah, okay? yeah, singing all and the time. And maybe now. I could sing it with you next for time. For sure, for sure. Now, what I saw you last was at the Golden Globes last year, right? Yeah, yeah. How, what was it like hosting it? Oh, that was stressful. That, that was the only I time understand. my blood pressure ever went up. That was real really? stressful right there. I was trying to play it cool, but um, it, it was hard because I, I, the, the monologue was really important to me, and it didn't really come together until the hotel room, like right before the show. And mm -hmm. NBC was like, we got to see the script, and I just didn't give it to him. I didn't know what I was going to say, and so I just kind of walked out and spoke from the heart. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was... It was I, you, you present it first. I did. Right after. Right after. So I was probably in a daze. Like I was like, <laughs> Oh my god, oh my god, yes, I remember this night. Yeah, you look gorgeous. And I was just Thank you. like a nervous. I could have came and sang with you to help you out if you needed me. I so would have said Had I known, had I known, <laughs> I would have for sure. And then okay, so I know you I've never seen someone sit because you sat down on the stage yeah. and, and host it. Yeah. Like what inspired that? You know, I just wanted to be comfortable. I try and um, be honest in those moments. Right. It's really hard. The camera's that's on the and there's a lot go. of pressure. But uh, that's just how I felt at the time. Yeah. You know, like, the, they kind of just followed me wherever I went. And mm. so I sat down. Because and... it was your space and you owned it. I have to ask you this. Would you ever host again? I, honestly, I don't think they'd have me back. <laughs> <laughs> you don't? I, don't? I think it's over. I, I think know. it's mutual. I think, I think... Uh, I did it. I was as honest as I could be. I think it's, I think it's over. Wow. And then, I mean, speaking of awards, because you won your first Emmy back in 2022, right? Yeah, 2022. We got to talk about your outfit. I love how you express yourself. The outfit that you wore. Do y'all see this outfit? Oh. <laughs> I have never seen someone accept an award. Yeah, yeah. With no shirt on. And how long was your fitting? Honestly, it was quick because I, <laughs> I, I was uh, I, I knew I wanted to wear a fr I wanted to go as like a, a wrestling villain, you know, just like, <laughs> like go in. I wanted to win, so I, I was uh, I was going trying to be real confident. I, I was having, if I can borrow like a Mariah Carey phrase, I was having a shirtless moment. Nice. You know, it was a real shirtless era of my life. <laughs> yeah. How did it feel, like accepting the award, or did you realize like I am at the awards with no shirt on? 
having a moment. You like, know, I... Because you kind of set a new trend. I, I, oh, did I? I think. Hey, I'm good. I'm glad to do that. I was... It was free. It was hot in the room, so I was glad to not have a shirt on. <laughs> yeah. Is that what you were thinking? Yeah, like, just let it... Just drink some wine with my shirt off. Wow. <laughs> And then you have been doing amazing things. Ten years ago, that's when you got your big break on Carmichael. Yeah, the Carmichael show. The wow. Carmichael show. That was so fun. Yes. Oh, I, I love that show. I love I love doing it. That was very fun to write. The cast was perfect. Mm -hmm. Like David Allen Greer and Loretta and Amber and Rel and Tiffany. I, I love them so much. Wow. Yeah. How does it feel when you look back at the photos? Like what comes to mind? Um, I you know, a lot of things. It was before I got my teeth fixed, so I, I got my teeth, I, I got my you. teeth fixed between seasons one and season two. <laughs> so like, I like, I can't look at my season one teeth. I like my season two teeth better. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I totally understand. <laughs> yeah, you. yeah. Oh my goodness. So, do you feel like the same person, or no? Uh, I feel freer. You know, I, I was definitely keeping my shirt on then, but <laughs> but I, I had a lot of fun on the show. Um, like, I, I just remember writing it. I, mm -hmm. I think I was kind of afraid to be seen at mm -hmm. the time in my life, so I was really focused on writing, and me and my friend Ari wrote, like, all the scripts, and it was so fun staying up till 6 in the morning, writing them, and hearing, like, this amazing cast bring it to life. But, yeah. you know, it, it feels like such a different time in my life. It's like right. looking through a high school yearbook. You've lived a lot of life, and you've blessed a lot of people. You are brave. Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. That was much. intense, like, to want to create a docu-series with such, like, realness. Yeah. And, and bareness. Yeah. And even having uncomfortable conversations on camera. Like, what is that like? Well, the cameras give you an excuse, right? Mm -hmm. Like, a, a reason to have really tough conversations. I've watched you have them on camera just over the years. Like, like really, really tough conversations. And for me, something about, like, you know, these, just like, okay, it's a purpose. It's right. a purpose to speak. The rest of my life started feeling like a performance. Especially with my parents. Go home for Thanksgiving. You go home for Christmas. You know, you talk about church and the weather. Right. <laughs> you know, everything else. You don't really talk about the things you, like, that are underneath, the things that are difficult to talk about. So yeah. doing this show, I, like, kind of, like, ambushed my family with cameras. Mm -hmm. Like, no, you got it. We have to talk mm -hmm. about certain things that just never come up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was, it, it was really tough. You, like, my dad just didn't want to be there. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 He didn't want to be there, but... Yeah. I think it's so necessary, and I think it, it's going to speak to so many and help others on their journeys, you know what I mean? Because oh, there's so you. many people that go through similar things. I yes. know everybody has their own journey, but I think it's gonna impact and make a huge difference to be able to have those conversations, you know? Yeah, yeah, I hope so, I hope so. I think everybody should ambush their parents with cameras. <laughs> just like, Maybe like, not just, cameras, but... Yeah, just bring them, bring them out and just like talk to them about yeah. things. Get it off your chest, you know? I think, especially generationally, like, it's like my generation versus my parents, like we're the, the therapy generation, we're the ones that explore our lives, explore ourselves. And our parents, like my parents, are very quiet. They keep things to themselves. And, mm -hmm. and I'm like, how about we just put all this on HBO? Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that, that is true. How is your relationship with them today? Uh, pretty good. I think because of those conversations. Mm -hmm. Like once you have them, the anticipation of them is tough, right? Like yeah. you, you're like, okay. How's it going to go? The stakes feel really high. Will things ever be the same? And then you do, and it's not as bad as you think. You know, yeah. the, the discomfort is actually pretty funny. The show's pretty funny, uh -huh. uh, but it's hard to get to that point. Mm -hmm. But so now we're, we're pretty good. We're learning. You know, I'm learning to accept certain things. They're learning to accept me. Yeah. Um, but it's a process. It takes some time. It is a process. And then, um, did you get a lot of support from, like, your fans and different ones like that? People have been nice. People have been really, really good. Uh, uh, like, people on the streets uh, just, like, coming up to me and saying nice things. I, I, really, I really like that. It makes me feel good uh, to know that. I, I never thought about responsibility in art mm -hmm. until recently. Right. Like, I, I always thought you just should make reckless things and not really think about it. And recently, I have started to make the things I wish I could have seen as a kid. Mm. And I think that's affecting people in a way that's... Is really meaningful. It definitely yeah. reflects that. I think you've done an awesome job. It's entertaining. It's it's therapeutic. It's healing. It's a lot of things. I, I don't think it's ever been done before. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I hope you watch. Please we watch We will the definitely show. Yeah. keep watching. I, I already watch. watched it. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch four episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.